Deborah Rennie was an ordinary woman trapped in a life of unfortunate circumstances. Her conservative upbringing had a significant impact on her decisions in life, but this did not stop Deborah from realizing her own true potential and empowering others in similar situations. I was born in the Eastern Cape and I can't sort of say I grew up in one place because my dad's job it was involved in being transferred a lot from city to city. I had a very loving, happy childhood. I've got two brothers, one's older and, and one's younger. My brothers and I were very close. We, we spent a lot of time together and, and we became great friends. Even though it was a very happy family, we were sort of brought up very much with a lot of old mindsets. We were sort of very much raised the way my parents had been raised. And that was a huge disadvantage because we grew up with blinkers. And it also made us very judgmental and critical of other people and their ways and their beliefs, um, specifically with religion. My dad was extremely protective. He had this fear that something would happen to me. So my brothers were allowed to do certain things that I couldn't do. And often when I queried and I said, but why can't I do that? My brothers are doing that. He'd go, because you're a girl. So I grew up very much with the idea that, that girls were less than, that we couldn't do um, a lot of things and that our lives were not as great because of your sex caused tremendous depression in me as a teenager because I could never just be. And I remember keeping my hair extremely short and dressing like a boy. I didn't realize at the time the impact that it had because only later in my 30s did I discover that I still didn't like being a girl. I didn't like being associated with that. I didn't like being feminine because for me it was a sense of lack of power. And I think a lot of my problems started from that that I never felt accepted as a girl. It dawned on me that there was a pattern, that the same thing was happening over and over and over again because I had this belief about men, that men are controlling, uh, that men wear the pants and if you stand up to them, they're gonna abuse you. I had to challenge those beliefs um, and change it really had to change my perception of myself, I had to change my perception of men and what relationships should be like. And that was sort of the, the turning point for me, where I finally was able to break the cycle of attracting those kind of people into my life. I met John and um, it's funny when we met initially he was just so easy to be with and he just created such a sense of that I could trust him. He's really responsible for a lot of the change in my life. He's been my inspiration because he saw so much in me that I didn't see in me. It's made me want to be that person. Um, to really dig deep and go, wow, that's what he sees and I would, that's who I am and I need to see it and acknowledge it and, and work on that. There is no fear with my relationship with John. I don't have that fear. I don't have a little voice saying, mm, 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 this is wrong. Everything about it is right. It's comfortable, it's easy, it's safe. It's, I mean, we are best friends. We're so interested in each other. Um, and that's what makes it completely different. He was the one that pushed me to write a book. And um, he just said to me one day, you have to write this book now because there's just so many women out there that need to hear the story and that their lives can change. He said to me, you're not going to work 
take three months off. I don't want you to think about making a living, earning an income, you're going to write. I started writing and, you know, it helped me to heal and helped me to put things in perspective. I also realized that after I launched the book, um, or released the book, should I say, there were so many women that attended the talks. So many women that phoned me and emailed me and SMSed me and said, oh gosh, for the first time ever, I don't feel alone. It was just that sense of connection where they could connect and say, I'm going through exactly what you went through and can you help me to overcome it or what do I do? This is Radio 2000 and I'm still talking to Deborah Abrini and she has publicly announced on national television that she has been an abused wife and she also says most people are not even aware of being in an abusive relationship. And when I had to challenge and acknowledge my part in it in the sense of my beliefs and my self-esteem being so low mm -hmm. that I put up with it and, I, and I, I didn't make changes and I had to... The fact of the matter is, is that one in six people are killed by their intimate partners in South Africa. And the scary thing is, is that even though the Domestic Violence Act was brought in and it covers and protects you in so many ways, mm -hmm. our own law enforcement department doesn't understand and is not educated about the act. If there's violence, there's always the possibility that it can escalate. And my suggestion is always to start planning your escape. There are a lot of steps that I actually mention in the book of how exactly to plan to get out of it. My life has just really changed since then because I've sort of taken on a new walk, a new journey. I've kind of turned up the volume on my intuition in a way that before I make a decision about anything, I just become quiet, I meditate, and I ask the right questions. And then I go with what I feel. So I've learned how to recognize my intuition and to listen. I love going to the beach, whether it's just sitting looking at the waves, there's just something about the sound of the ocean. Um, I'm extremely passionate about mountains and trees. Just sitting under a tree and listening to the rustling of the leaves, it's just so awesome, it's so peaceful. The wind or the breeze sort of going through the leaves, it's, it's very calming, I love that. But why do you think that happens? Where does the misunderstanding come from? I've been doing emotional intelligence workshops for five years already. That's what sort of started my training business. In the beginning it was very much focusing on corporates because I think emotional intelligence is very, very important in the workplace because your feelings give off energy. Your feelings create emotion and emotion is energy. So it's very contagious. So when people understand their own feelings and that the people they work with have similar feelings, they're able to communicate better, they're able to feel better about themselves and it creates a much nicer environment because it affects the energy within the organization. At school, I never thought, oh, one day I'm going to be a writer. I do remember when I was at school, though, that English was my favorite subject. And um, I got quite a few awards, in fact, for my essays, and I forgot all about it. And then when I wrote the first book, it really ignited the writer within me. And what I love about writing is, is that you can impart so much more to so many more people. You, your market is so much bigger. So um, I've always had this intense desire to help people. Um, and if I've learned from a struggle, I would like to help somebody else so that they don't, that it's not as painful for them. And with my writing, I can do that. So yeah, it's something I'm really passionate about and it's something I really, really enjoy doing. Because I understand firsthand how not being emotionally intelligent as a child shaped my life and caused all this pain and grief. That's why it's so important for me that we teach it from a young age and that parents and teachers know that there is power in words 
and the way we discipline our children and the way we either validate them or invalidate them is going to impact their life. So therefore my focus has turned a lot more to kids and parents and educators. I don't think enough has been said or done about abuse, domestic abuse. I think it's because there's still a lot of fear and the fear is very much that people think they'll be stigmatized and they will be labeled. People need to know that it's okay to talk about it and that you don't have to be stuck in an abusive situation, that you can change your life. People need to be inspired, they need to know that they have control over their lives. They have the power, they can change it. They don't have to stay in it. It's important for moms especially to take into consideration what those relationships are doing to their children because what it's doing is it's continuing the cycle. They get used to it, for them it's a comfort zone and they're going to repeat it. So the cycle is never ever gonna stop unless we stop it ourselves.